Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joseph. Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you and i lift my hands to worship you oh my Take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Lift your voice in one minute and cry for a visitation tonight. Let it be a sweet sound to you, O oh God. We thank you for your visitation tonight, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice. It takes love for God to appear before Him every now and then. And I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I go on with the teaching tonight, I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly. Number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very 
prophetic move of God. Um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace. You have to look at the broader picture. Every man's destiny, what we call assignment, whether for an individual, for a church, a ministry, or for a territory, is their contribution. I like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets, a contribution to the big picture. God has an idea, he's a, he has an agenda. We've taught again and again on the agenda of God. The book of Colossians, the first two chapters, examine intently the agenda of God. It tells us the predeterminate counsel of God. Hallelujah. It's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not um, realize that God is actually going somewhere with us. This is not just an endless pursuit, a loyalty to a vision, a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with God. This is more than that. Praise the Lord. It's important that we, we understand that this is not just a ministry. This is not just a church. This is a move of God. And that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture. That which God is doing upon the surface of the earth. When you realize this, you will come with every sense of seriousness. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations. It's important that whenever you come for koinonia, generally speaking, whenever you go to any ministry, any church, um, take time to study the operation of God in that area. Because God works in different ways through different platforms. According to many factors, his predeterminate counsel for them, their level of alignment to his will, the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest. Are we together now? When God calls a people, when God commissions a ministry, an assignment, there are usually certain graces. Please pay attention. Graces, anointings, and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um, committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see, if you don't realize what is obtainable, Bishop Oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity. That you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible. So the Lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again, to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place. Please um, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people. I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation. They just love to see sinners saved. That's wonderful. But um, this is not one of those platforms. Believe me. I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit this is not a minor contribution to what god is doing on earth if you if you see it that way you will you will not give your best there's been a lot of prophecy about zaria 
right from before some of us were born there's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season so we're not just stumbling into a move of god resident within the north no there is a mystery behind this move of god that is coming in this season and what god is doing and so i want us to understand that we are prophecy being played jesus in the book of luke chapter 4 the bible says reading from verse 16 downward that he took the book the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of God can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it I want you to value it I want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God. You know how pastors say, look, we are going places. And the members say, I'll be there with you. This is not one of those things. It's not just that we are going places. You will see how this move fits into prophecy. It will happen. I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier a dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are here seated in this place tonight, it's because there is prophecy upon your life. Believe that. If there was no prophecy upon your life, you would not be here. I'm not motivating you. I am telling you that among all these people, there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with. That's why God made sure that you have to be here in this season. And it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish 
a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories listen as a school pay attention as though you are being trained for something great i've always given my life and the presence of god and the word of god utmost seriousness you never see me distracted in the house of god and in the presence of god you must please pay attention this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional i want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation The lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day. In 24 hours, something must start fighting you. Are we together? No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this place, you can choose to argue, but it's like a virus. It has caught up with your spirit. Hallelujah. You can pretend eh, there's nothing usual about it, but I tell you, if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this 
have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say cut but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that would be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and its power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned 
so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believe they lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you're only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time I find out that what I've communicated is not accurate, I do not have any embarrassment to come back and say, look, let's realign. We have seen something clear. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Expect transformation. You can measure transformation. Your degree of change. Your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be uh, coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things saying the same things having the same convictions no the word of god alters your convictions something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing i detest stagnancy in my life like cancer i detest it i'm obsessed with progress i like to see progress that's why i hate stagnancy anyone who is close to me knows that i'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically when we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations 
part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything. Only brings pain and regret. You remember they flogged you near that stone. You remember that's where they drove you out of the house. Nothing to inspire you. The word of God should change you. That at the end of every koinonia service, you should just sit down like this and get up. I like it when the word of God enters people and I study the reactions of people to the word. Not just, oh, preach, preacher. That's, there's a place for that, but that your spirit is, is receiving something and you're saying, look, what am I doing? It's, it's, God is giving me too much opportunity. I'm wasting grace. I'm making the word of God of non-effect. Let the word of God challenge me. He said, the spirit entered into me, Ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2, and set me upon my feet. The spirit entered. When he spake unto me, he brought an idea that is superior to that which I have known. And it compels change. Change with results immediately. That you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately. Make certain vows and commitments. Enter into certain strong personal covenants with God on account of what you have heard. The Bible says, meditate on these things. It says, give yourself wholly to them. It says that you're profiting. Brothers and sisters, ask God how much I pray for you. I don't think I pray for you. I pray for myself one-tenth of the way I pray for you. And my prayer is not God, give them cars, give them houses. That's a stupid prayer. The prayer is, oh God, let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery. That's what will produce every other thing. You know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery? That you come into oneness with these mysteries. You know them. You are persuaded about their reality. And they begin to produce remarkable results in your life. Financial prosperity, spiritual growth. is never a thing of joy to me. I don't know about other preachers. But I hate being the only one. I know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy. But I hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results. Unlike many preachers, it is my joy when I see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people. It gives me great joy. So it pains me when after a long time, our level of spiritual metamorphosis slow. We must step up this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. You see, if you don't step up, a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite You must expect revival. Revival and awakening. This is a place, a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually, where people who have given up, maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces, pastors who used to walk with fire, churches that used to burn, something happened for whatever reason. This is the place to come and find restoration. That you can say, look, I don't know what is wrong with me. I used to love God. I used to be passionate. Now, I don't know what is happening. Let me go and find out. Part of the vision God has given us is to make this place a place of refiring. A place of revival. Hallelujah. That in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you 
just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where used to be lawn tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it, it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here i'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of Christ today? Every city is supposed to have these provisions. When a city does not have that provision, there is no apostolic authority over their city. The hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city. Where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city. Please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. You can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities. It's not a name. It's not a title. It's an office. They are the gatekeepers of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city. Stop Koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city. That's when you will know what we represent in the spirit. Never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people. God's idea is that in every city, there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called have, have been called have refused to align god will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there this is the concept of multiplication of grace when people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit God will have to come to his servant and say this was initially not in your curriculum but to not to frustrate my counsel I know how uneasy it is for you but I will multiply your grace you see that when I multiply your grace I will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration if a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the 
of the apostolic office is not just teaching it's kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of god that you know is a hard person the word of god is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament the grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace even if you are a quiet person they're coming from afar they're coming from afar oh 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 Oh. 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 if our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed such that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say i'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading god's people brothers and sisters the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit i want you to know this and take advantage of it we are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build, is a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, I know a place where the river flows from Zion and I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere the person may even come late just like many people outside here and while they listen something is happening to them it's more than the words we speak there is a spirit communication if it were words believe me you will be tired by now there is a difference between newness and freshness Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Mandala Kaparadosh. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gate? The gate. Open up the door. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. I don't lie. I don't lie. Yeah. I don't lie. Yeah. You reign on Sing in your name. We will rise. Sing Adonai. 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 
Just the voices. Adonai, Adonai. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on I. Sing Adonai. Adonai. Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on now. Adonai. Adonai. The last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! And everybody claims he's doing something. I don't say this in a cynical way. My heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry. Nothing current in what the Spirit is doing. We celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suit and we have a nice car to prove that it is working. Is that how much we love the body? We have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? How did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday 
it affects eternity if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their atm no matter how much they have in their account because they they miss the bank for three days i'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival night or night you reign on night revelation chapter 3 in your name we will rise I don't know you reign on night casting crowns lifting hands Bowing art is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing art is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, see, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of Christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent There are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody saying 1 million. Say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. 
all hell will fight it and those people will usually be Christians we owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things there has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when Israel starts messing up Moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of Egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the Lord Satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there there's there no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your boat and you see a christian dragging a he goat to a a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me I hear what I'm saying. I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. They will criticize me in the day and call in the night. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. And we cut us. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do. We must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for God to find the people. Listen, don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God. What are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to... They just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame 
came on our degree of backsliding believe me I have come with a mantle of revival tonight my heart pains me when I see this thing as I travel around regions I know that men of God are doing their best but I'm telling you there's got to be true apostolic voices it's not a title it's not a name it's an election of grace when will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge there are people who have come right now do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up standing some wanting to be healed wanting to be blessed I can hardly attend to one tenth of people it is never my intention to be a superstar the problem is there is a price it's not a gift we have been deceived that it's a gift let me tell you I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom it's an office it's not a, it's not a title it's an office Paul says how that by revelation it was revealed to me this mystery this mystery It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little people are looking they are feeling offended for your prayer life because they are hoping you backslide so that it will it will it will make them comfortable your your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow and seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before i continue are we together you are going to say lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it my God is so much bigger than this yeah, this can't be it God is so much bigger than this. This can't be. It. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be. It. My God is so much bigger than this. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening. A season of reawakening 
from a state of dormancy a reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy spiritual inertia inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray how do i know that a territory please help me. how do i know that a territory is under the influence of a revival thank you there are certain parameters number one the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God corporately not just individually there is a restoration of God consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god When they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discuss politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not there are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of Evan Roberts, people would lay hands on the magazine. Just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take over. People will start falling under the anointing, repenting by themselves, having visions of Jesus. Restoration of love and passion for God. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory 
the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and and, and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then you would throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between god speaking to you in your secret place and god speaking to a territory god has his mouthpieces everywhere and then compromises begin to come in what you would have talked about you no longer talk about let me tell you how satan destroys great men he makes us victims of our messages if satan knows that god has anointed me to liberate people in an area he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again you see if you love god because of husband the day the husband comes there's no more pursuit to love god you see why we teach? look you know i teach you a balanced teaching here when you tie your love for god to things as a bride you are in for a shock i can love god because of anointing i hope you know that and that anointing can lead me to go and fast because i want power the day the power comes and i can have one or two results i now know that the anointing has come are we together now so no matter what I, you don't know my secret place is it not when i come out here it's only god that knows whether i'm serious over what i'm saying or not you cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract 
whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when satan wants to throw you he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you he throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it are you getting what i'm saying that's why certain people will not be serious with god and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down love for god this night we are addressing our love for god lovers down me more than this one of the first indices of a true revival we can look at zaria as a city and samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city we can look at abu as a campus and know whether our love for god has diminished when somebody let me not go ahead of myself number two marks characteristics of a true revival number two the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring brothers and sisters may god never make our territories without men who can speak the truth are you hearing what i'm saying the devil is out to frustrate men of god and water down people who can speak the truth please let me tell you something brothers and sisters if you are a christian many things must change in your life your lifestyle must change your conversation must change not by the energy of the flesh there is an alignment your job is to do that alignment if you do it well the transformation must happen there's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of christ to a point that somebody will have to say i'm a christian for it oh you're a christian so you're a brother in the faith that's a serious issue are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about Koinonia, for instance, and say, Ah, Koinonia, you know, Apostle, ah, you don't used to see me. You say, You mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of Christ. They called them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person? No. But I know he's a Christian. You can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking, my spirit is okay. You are not all right. Please, let's let's end this. You are not all right. Let me tell you the truth. No, you are not all right. You are watching porn. See, you see, let me tell you something. I'm not condemning you, don't get me wrong. The difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the Spirit. When, when you are sinning unconvicted, you are not in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. If by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit, you went to your friends, they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take, you don't know what happened, you gave into the flesh. That conviction is a sign that you are in Christ, that you can return. And the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there the true spirit of holiness please i speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, i got to hear of course and one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing. I'm very fine. Very fine. Very fine. Healthy in the spirit. Very fine. I intend to continue with God for a long time. I decided that from the start of the journey. We are afraid 
of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you live Jesus I live I have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you live Jesus I live today I live to pray a true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there when the old man wants to touch it he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross and you mind your business and leave that money there even though you needed money to eat the spirit of holiness let me tell you if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory we will never experience the fullness of god we will not see miracles and signs and wonders please let's not mock god I know what I'm saying is hard, but you too, you know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life. And the key to unholiness is carelessness. Carelessness. Bros, you there? There's one party we're having. Say, yeah, but I don't drink against it. Just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lord settled near Sodom. Lord settled near Sodom. Lord settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God you can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God there has to be true holiness there has to be true holiness I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say Lord restore to my life the spirit of holiness go ahead and pray please pray especially if you know you are affected by what i'm saying please pray this is a threshing floor it's a family please lay your hands and say lord i've been pretending as if this is not an issue but tonight you have brought your word out of love not to condemn me but to remind me that you are still waiting i receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness those outside please make sure you are laying your hands Oh, I separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh. The impulses of the flesh. The appetites of the flesh. The appetite. The lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it. But something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely. And I allowed. I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place. I receive grace. 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 It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh remember the cross the place where grace comes from your old man has been nailed therefore mortify your body take advantage of that grace let it become an instrument of righteousness please pray it's a year of multiplied grace and influence god is not a native doctor godliness true holiness that's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, O oh God. That in lifestyle, 
in character in conversation that everything about your life there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job in school in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say Lord I overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge God is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling visiting the guy carelessly doing all kinds of things carelessly you are a Christian God is bringing this message to salvage you get back to order get back to order get back to order get back to order the true spirit of holiness no you can't start accepting bribe not at this level of your life you used to hate it before don't all of a sudden love bribe you are a christian and a christian indeed the spirit of god in you and the righteousness of god compels you to hate immorality not out of fear but because of your love for god and your desire to be used by him make sure it doesn't leave that's a fire you must not allow to die aside from immorality and the rest what of vain glory what of self-seeking what of vanity ambitions that are not consistent with christ please pray this is a threshing floor tonight those of us outside make sure you are praying if nobody has told you there is a problem with your life i'm telling you there is if you are giving room to the flesh i don't care what excuse you bring god does not condemn but he does not condone evil many of us have been praying lord i want you to use me i want to see your power i'm showing you the secret it overrides fasting and prayer hallelujah let's hurry up number three the third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place the third sign is massive salvation of souls genuine salvation genuine salvation genuine salvation it's not enough for people to come and be saved they must be saved well well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural how many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying every time you see sinners i want you to imagine an accident scene imagine a fatal accident what would you do there are some of us we have roommates we have people in our workplaces is until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say I'm too fine how can I tell this guy to come how can I lead him to Christ massive salvation so, so. by the way the Lord while I was preparing this the Lord gave me an instruction I'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by God's grace next Friday's miracle service you are coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch God will do for them this year you will watch what God will do he will surprise you I, I will I, please you are permitted to write a full cap sheet of names if you have it 
write it down write no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledge god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when saul landed on the floor he knew that this was god see god knows where to touch the arrogance of any man are we together so you're going to bring one prayer request your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones but please write it down not names of enemies and that's not what i'm asking you names of sinners sinners people who you know you are agreeing with god let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of god on your life be passionate about where his heart is are we together if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say okay, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you you've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again i remember one of our ladies who years ago they were all unbelievers you know non-christians now i mean and god i mean saved her she became saved i think while on campus and we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings god touched her brother i think god touched her mother three of them were all saved remaining the father the father was a hardened he wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom we told her keep praying Just don't say god will not touch them keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved, I was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car. He's, I don't know, it's like his family members. They drove down and said, which depression are you in that would have made you to become a Christian? Ah, you will see salvations that will scare you. The day you go and look at somebody in your family, you will think it's a mistake. You just hear, you say, what are you doing? Say, I'm praying in tongues. Say, are you joking? Say, I'm a sanctuary keeper. I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the world since. I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem Ministry. I said, it's a lie. The one day he called me, and we were talking, we just spoke, and he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance. And tell her, eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. Say, no, no, no. Don't eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. Well, someone is telling you, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, 
use koinonia as a platform to save sinners you see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming i tell you give them chance to come i remember somebody uh, I, I, I don't know exactly I think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these, these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what I'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching he saw a vision of Jesus outside and he got born again the day he came for counseling I could not believe it ushers I think one or two people there's one of our brothers in ushers too who was like that now totally transformed serving the lord working in the ocean department who told you god cannot save them your stubborn father your stubborn mother your missing brother who comes back once in three months i'm telling you when the power of god lands on them we don't know the power that raised christ from the dead that's why because all we are teaching about in church is money we don't know the power if a power can raise a dead body is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change him? number four let's run the fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of god now please hear me i say this sincerely from the depth of my heart and i, I mean no condemnation with this but when as men of god we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no, I'm like that. Me, God gave me this. I don't believe in that concept. I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there. But brothers and sisters, people must be saved. And they must have passion for the house of God. Because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom. The church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. It's not enough for people to be born again. That's why we, co we collect their details. We send them text messages and follow them up. What's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers? Once in a while, you send them a scripture. Maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say, maybe it's a scripture. Love not the world. Looks at your phone. Looks at that bottle. And he knows. And the spirit of God, you have given him access to kick in. And he drops it never to pick it again. There's no support structure in the body of Christ to help sinners stand. Once they are born again, we say, okay, now just find your way back to your seat and the Lord help you. That's why when people get born again, we recommend to them. Because the ministry is still growing, we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do. Right? We recommend them to go to the prayer department at least for one month even if they don't intend to be members just to join that's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people that's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance please i want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life are we together now yeah you just sit down and say kai this thing self to six i will even sit down outside it's like it's cold abby those things are indices it's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord the, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us. Remember the scripture. It says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion. Passion. There are people, you see them January, Koinonia, and then later on, Maybe when result is out or something, it just coincides with a miracle service. They now drag themselves and come and sit outside. And of all the prophecies that are coming, they are just waiting for when they'll talk about academics. The moment they say, for your academics, they, now, they are now invited. Immediately they finish, they run. That game you are playing with God, you will not win. Praise the Lord. 
I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small. What we are doing in the church is sheep stealing. What did I call it? Sheep stealing. When you steal a sheep, a sheep is not a fool. It grew somewhere. Eventually, ah, you see, I am the good shepherd. My sheep here know my voice. And we, we steal sheep. We are, we are trying to steal choices, quality sheep. So if Sam, please stand up, Sam. If Sam is a millionaire, I want that kind of sheep around because I know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place, that attitude. Every time we see unbelievers, you see somebody with his draggy jeans, you know this guy, you even need to support him back. We don't like those kind of souls. The person calls you daddy, say, who is your, I'm not your father, I don't know you. I just got you born again, please look for somebody else. These are the kinds of, ah, this is my son, you are, I'm well pleased. That carnal attitude, are you getting what I'm saying? So, when, if that's why I say it to the glory of God, and you know here, I know no man after the flesh. I will not go to anybody's house and say, um, you are a senator, uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry, we, we, have, we, we want to buy a bus. God will use people. There is nobody that I will reject on grounds of anything. Whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love when you see a beautiful lady say you are you are my daughter daughter how are you and you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry she's wondering what do you like me or the beauty see members are not idiots they know pastors who are serious they know they know pastors who are playing games you just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies. These are the, this is what we do that destroy us. Are we together now? Or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that. And oh no, there is a place for honor. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying, this thing we are doing is too much. It's sheep stealing. How many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints? The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a, remember the story of a shepherd, right? 99 sheep. One got missing. What did he do to the 99? They were all right. So he left them and went, still not minding if he loses the 99, went to look for that one. Is that our attitude? When somebody comes to stand, you are looking whether he's holding an envelope. If it's not, you look at his shoe, look at his watch and say, let's pray. Father, help this person and you are praying. Don't waste my time here. But when somebody comes, package, you are like, what are they, what, let me, let me know the needs. If you are a pastor here, please do this thing truly. God is going to judge us, not in a condemning way. We are going to be accountable for this. Act as if there is an authority above you. Members know. Let me tell you, there is no member who will see a man of God talking like I'm talking, who will not love him and be open to him. Do you know why many of our members in different churches, I'm speaking apostolically, there are many people listening. Do you know why many members, they know their pastors don't like them. They know it. They can't truly call this person my pastor, my father, somebody I can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money. They want what will make them proud. By God's grace, we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here. No matter what you have done, we enter the hole with you and come out together. A good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy. He lays down his life for his sheep. Passion for the house of God. Number five. Quickly. Passion for the word. Indices that measure a revival in a place. Passion for the word. Passion for prayer. Passion for a life of worship. You can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word. Jordan Bookstore is there. He will tell you. I know that people love the word in this place. I'm even careful to announce certain books. 
because you announce it by tomorrow there are people who are already there getting books studying buying concordance truly let me tell you i'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes you will come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable then all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please let's take this thing of god seriously when do you close yourself and study not just devotional where you read fast as you are praying you're on your way going oh i see this uh, god and then scripture for reading luke chapter this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice amen you just drop it and run ask the person what he's running towards he will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life and we have left the word of life i found your word and i did eat them and they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul passion for the world passion for worship many of us don't worship we pray and we study the word there is a place for worship in your spiritual growth if you don't have worship tapes now technology has made it easy put these things i have a selection in my phone i call them deep worship there's one called encounter that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level i have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them has it happened to you like that yeah you put the songs don't just say christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs no 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 separate this thing and take god seriously you have a selection the moment you just hear a christian one there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it more just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it you will never find one on christian song in my phone i'm not one of those people who say look we need to work with technology i'm not a fool technology has failed us many things governments have failed us it's obvious they are ignorant we used to say it before but there was no room to expose it right now it's clear that the government of nations are clueless come to the kingdom and learn the ways of god the years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit we are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now a time will come when those who had that oil they will not have anything again satan does not give anything free have you not learned a day will come the day he meets all the people celebrating him they will pay with their life satan never gives you a thing free he will give you you will think he's dash but his business he will come in the future for everything anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death the end is death create an atmosphere of worship create an atmosphere of the world get bible i have i have a, a very beautiful software that i got just the words of jesus they just pick them through the gospels just everywhere jesus spoke just the words of jesus always oh, beautiful with worship playing in the background like this i tell you you will wash your spirit you know how you when you listen you will know you are getting clean through the word the word cleanses cleanses your mind sometimes i sleep and let it keep playing and i have visions and encounters you wake up shaking under the presence of god you create an atmosphere that cannot be denied this is how it happens what if i have roommates that are not serious that's why you have a phone you cry to god for a good phone he gave it to you use it well use it well not just for sending text messages use it well how much does it take to download i mean there are android devices with one two thousand naira don't say i cannot afford it your hair your shoulder your knees your toes look at all you have used your money that god gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone 
remember your spirit is better than your body invest in it first number let's hurry up we're almost done when there is a true revival in a place there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement listen revival affects the quality of the living of the people with India don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer no when there is a real revival the quality of the life of God's people is improved almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival it's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something a lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed. Because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages there will be blessings there will be children there will be all kinds of breakthroughs don't make it look as if when you seek god you'll be in trouble no seek ye first the kingdom of god matthew 6 33 tells us he said and his righteousness if you do that properly he says all other things shall be added to you as well amen seven when there is the true spirit of revival in a place there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick to say, no, no, no. Emotional healing, please. Physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind, and he's healed he's healed is that not true we must contend for grace even in this dimension say amen and may it happen through your hands there is a joy when god uses you there is a joy when god does things around you but when it happens through your hands it's a blessing i trust that god will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people that they note you and say ah i I came to Amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened. Great testimony. Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, he said no, it's because you came for Koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews. I guarantee you. Any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous, people are not looking. If they are looking for where to watch film, their silver bed, there are many, their cinema, and all kinds of places. People don't come to church to watch movies. They come to church because they have real problems. Is that not true? They need the power of God head on in their lives. Lastly, the final index that shows that the atmosphere is under 
the influence of revival is impartation of gifts graces and mantles impartations see revivals are times where god recruits people into his army most people stepped into the call of god upon their life at revivals when people are just praying non-stop for a while the holy ghost separate me paul and barnabas there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place remember a man in the bible called agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children god knows my children god knows before they arrive there will be a special recording waiting for them as soon as they arrive straight on before the nonsense that society brings this and that you are stupid you are foolish no. they will receive something they will start having visions and encounters of jesus that's why i respect and i want us to appreciate them i respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children let them sleep and sleep in the presence of god it was in the presence of god samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of god even if you must sleep do it in the presence of god because although your body is sleeping your spirit is receiving impartations of mantles and graces that's what is happening to some of you some of you in the nearest future god will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing i'm doing right now when you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray i'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry i may not have time to read the scriptures is god blessing you tonight the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first prize you want to host the glory of God the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that I found very interesting Isaiah 52 verse 11 I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure it says having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity iniquity is not just sin fornication and the rest no it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh let's read this scripture together one to read depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing it says go ye out from the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord those that host precious things from God he says depart depart ye consecration consecration very very important set apart for his service set apart the Bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself we want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time it doesn't happen no consecration consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent you know that that dedication they have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom you must dedicate your whole life some of us have given god half of our lives some of us gave god everywhere 
excluding your head and your thinking some of us gave god every no 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 you have to give him everything you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty O oh, morning star you truly are number two the second prize is hunger and thirst you want to see revival in your life there must be a hunger for it isaiah 44 verse 3 and psalm 63 verse 1 and 2 i'm giving this to us very quickly because of time he will pour water upon him that is thirsty him that is what no. there must be a thirst i will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring do you have that hunger i'm telling you i have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life i want to see the revival power of god in my life that everywhere I go to regions to minister, I leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place. Hunger and thirst. Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. He says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He say, my soul pants after you. Right? In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life? It was men like John Knox that prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. We quote it and have no passion at all. Number three, the price for revival. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting. Prolonged seasons. You don't pray for one week and see revival there are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop before the fire of god fell on them prolonged seasons that's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life and please i talk to everybody here inside and outside if your prayer life has nosedived we welcome you to join the prayer department on tuesdays even if it is for one week there is fire burning in that place, I tell you. Join and refire yourself. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings. Listen, fasting is a powerful spiritual principle. You don't do it out of religion or out of fear. However, it, it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have faith in god really unbelief is what it challenges so that the conviction about the reality of god is crystallized in your heart acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 it was while they were in the upper room praying that the holy ghost fell acts 13 verse 2 it was while they worshiped and prayed and ministered unto the lord with fasting the bible spoke i mean god spoke to them and said separate unto me paul and barnabas Number four, the price for the word of God. Intense study of the word. With a view to living by it. Not just for head knowledge. Not like the people the Bible says, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Intense study of the word of God. Finally, the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time. The sacrifice of time. You want to see God's might in your life, you must give him time. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. 
I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. You are not going to rush God and see his glory. The proof of passion is the investment of time. Anything you love, you have time for it. Please give God time. Remember I told us last week, you must give God time. Don't give God one hour. Don't give God two hours. There are times where you have to dedicate a whole day and just say, Lord, this is for you. A time of worship and prayer. Let his presence host you. That day, you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life, Bible stories, watching messages, listening to teachings, worship, prayer. You must even be fasting. You can just focus. This day is unto you. Imagine if someone walked up to you and said, I'm dedicating my tomorrow for you. No matter how antisocial you are, even if you say, no, thank you, you will be happy. That somebody can sacrifice his day. When you come to somebody and he tells you, look, I don't have time, I'm busy. Sometimes you feel bad. You feel that ah, this person doesn't value me so much. That's what happens when we come to God and just worship. God, are you aware that I have problems? Okay, I'm aware. Do something about them. I'm on my way. Lord, I give you time. My life is measured in time. And if I give God my life, he must be Lord of my time too. He's Lord of my time. At this level of your life, the time you are spending visiting people and, and gossiping, they are tired of you. Why don't you come to the one who is not tired of you? They don't just have the courage to tell you. They are really tired of you. You are going every time, eating, disturbing, bringing stories that are unnecessary. At a point, you now lie on it because you have to keep moving. Why, I mean, why don't you come to somebody who he never says change to come. He says my presence will change you. Come. come. I give God time. Anyone who knows me knows that I give God time. Check the amount of time you give to God. Now, of course, if you are working, you don't have all the time. You can't get up doing your job and just shut down that day. No, no, no. no. There are times, there are weekends, there are holidays there are special times you can just say lord you know that it's my desire to spend this much time with you but now that i've had this opportunity i run to you i run to you we don't know what happens in the presence of god when we give him time when the glory of god comes into your life he brings beauty beauty and glory your life will remain a wonder to people if you can be planted by that riverside that riverside with you Apostle, I have no job. Just walk with him. Just walk with him. If you were working five years ago, all your salary put together would not be more than six million. Walk with him. Guys. The Holy Spirit. Fortunately, from next week, I'm starting a series. The Lord has allowed me to take a series. We're taking a series on the Holy Spirit. A complete I will share with you very deep things that I've not shared with many people. The Holy Spirit. You ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent. I went to Harvard. You ignore him as a father because you think I'm not a small child. Hi. Will I ever be able to leave him? I know you are looking at me is because I'm the I'm the part of the deal that is visible but behind me I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see I'm not ashamed of it oh. there is one who is mighty mighty there is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see if it is the Lord's doing remember then it must be marvelous if it's a man's doing then it is natural scientific but the moment it becomes Marvelous, it is the Lord's doing. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Hey. You are marvelous.
economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for working with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority. I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to work with me. Then I give you an unction. They may criticize you, but you don't deny proofs. Brothers and sisters, no, sir. I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen. The key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time. No, no, no. Look, I teach us some. No. No. If I followed that route, I would have been a failure today. A big failure. I'm not ashamed. You are the power in me. You are the fire at work in me. You are my ever present help. Holy Spirit I... How do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that? How do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life? There are people here now with situations that doctors have written you off. Even a charm cannot solve it. You need a commodity that is not available in the earth. I told you the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. In a few minutes from now, 10 years problems will just leave. Just like that. No, 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 no. That's what happens when you value him. That's what happens. That's what happens. Listen, when you honor a man of God, you don't just honor a body. You honor the sacrifice. The sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility. Listen to me, all men are not equal. No, sir. It's, it's a very harsh statement, but it's the truth. We are equal in Christ. But our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host. Ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man. The Holy Spirit. We are going to begin to pray. But I, 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 I just four things. The Holy Spirit. You don't know him, you are in trouble. You will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve. You didn't study everything. You had a degree in an area. Having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom. No, sir. That information is too small to define the quality of your life. Ministry. You need him. You want to succeed in life, you don't just need information. You need a person. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. 
grace and glory. I trust that God will initiate people into that dimension of grace, of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy. Seven people. Seven people. Seven people. Shalabran is calabi. Shabraskele Brahas. Call your people, oh God. It's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy. The sister outside. For he will be real to you. Real to you by his spirit. This is not an issue of jamboree. It's not an issue of feeling anointed. It's walking with a person. It will make your life a wonder. A wonder. A wonder. He will make your life a wonder. He will not just give you anointing. He will walk with you walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me your son and living your spirit in your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving be your son and lead your spirit your word on earth please sit down if you can the third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lady. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me will always provide for me. Praise your mercy. allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit Southern Kaduna. 
let the hand of God step into that dimension it's not a miracle it's a sign and wonder it's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit everyone from southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace southern Kaduna lift them oh God I hear my spirit lifting 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 he's raising you raising you by his spirit raising you there is an unction that makes this possible raising you by his spirit I hope I'll be able to finish this the mysteries of the kingdom that's the third thing that you must seek to know not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there please sit down let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk there are so many people you must access the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say mysteries a mystery is a secret code of operation the kingdom of God operates based on systems and you see these mysteries contain in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No! No! Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it 
So if I can transfer sickness, why can I not transfer health? Are you seeing that now? That means I can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you. Life. Being the light of men. You see that? That's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself. An understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it. So you can come with a challenge, you can come with a sickness. Like some of you are here now trusting God. All kinds of impossible situations. They've told you it cannot be solved. They are right based on their understanding. This is a doctor. They are not wrong based on their understanding. But God's, God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities. You see, he says with God, with God, watch this. I've taught you alone. It is impossible, but with God, with God alone, I cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with God all things all things all things are possible I want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the Lord God of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs Nigeria. Not the power that governs UN. The power that created the heavens and the earth. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. Number three. That's it there. Mysteries. So number one, you must know God. Number two, that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus. Number two, you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The third thing, you must have access to the word. You must crave for accurate understanding. Number four, this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few. And I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body. The fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said, I will build it. I will build it. He didn't say, I will make it. I will build it. Like a formula, like a plan. And I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is a formation that the body of Christ is built. It is so formidable. The gate of hell can only touch members, not the body. The body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God 1st Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God. He said for this cause many are weak, limited. For this cause many are sickly. And for this cause many sleep. When was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body? That's what killed him. Please pay attention. Get my teachings discerning the body. That whole series. You have to listen. If you are in ministry here or you are a church leader, a deacon, you have to listen to it. If not, you will never rise. A body has thou prepared for me. It was prepared to be used. A formidable strategy that beats hell hands down. It's called the body of Christ. Everything is available in the body. 
listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers 
destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that god anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of god i, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to mount zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of god trying to shine his ministry no tonight you're standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in god please listen to me you're standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you are about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai.
Jesus, I believe your power is here. Let your power give me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it end every captivity by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it break every burden in my life. Hallelujah. Keep standing, everyone. I want to make an altar call quickly. Right now, everyone stand. There are people here, overflow one, two, three, following us online in this place right now. The Bible says this life is in his son. You don't hear about the son and receive life. You meet the son. There are people standing here, men and women scattered around. You are a pastor, leader, deacon, gentleman, lady, old, young, rich, poor, regardless of your status. Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. In every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way me. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not working well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now told me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and also I my back pain from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. 
that is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them, you heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Yes. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy. It's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a point. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. You know some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hand some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back While we are waiting for them, please make sure we are going to be very fast. You see that our time is gone. So it's going to be a very quick walk. Very quick walk. We are going straight to the business of the night. And I want you to believe it doesn't take time. It only takes God. It doesn't take time. It only takes God. Very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. We are going to trust the Lord to... Please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus please be serious in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against god's word over my life i declare that you are under judgment tonight lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and pray everyone shala bras kada baladia Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one. 
until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent such a strong anointing in this place tonight lift your hands and just be silent please i'm seeing two numbers five and one and the lord is saying there are 51 people here 51 people he's bringing massive deliverance to their families I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shubrataka Labraska Labriata. Shabraskata Brakatele Katia Labash. So break it Ali Braska Bariata. Embreko to Shoto Pareketa. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Seketela kata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete prekete la kaya. Ay 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 ay. Mighty hunger. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty hunger. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And we had us keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes, that's what I'm seeing, just flying up. Snakes, I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence right now. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. 
Mateketa, Lekete Prakata. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata, those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep that You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus. I'm seeing gates. Gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I open those gates. Kato Shobarata. Legete Kete. Sobes Kotai. Embregete Kete Leka. Gates of stagnation be opened by the unction of the Spirit. Gates be opened. Efata be opened. The gates must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gates be open. The two lift gates. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access access into a place access out of a place the bible says to open the doors of prison there are men who are moving but they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of jesus one more time i come against the spirits that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three open it I open it I open it online outside I command it to open I command it to open locked by ancestry locked by divination locked by necromancy and projection manipulation of the constellations I command in the name of he that holds the key of David I command that door be open that no power can shut be sensitive tonight the spirit of God is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family Visiting your family. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married, no children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Himatona. Thy kingdom come. I will be. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit. Visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the spirit of God. Hear me. And I'm hearing in my spirit. Break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means. But this is something that has to do with a covenant. Involving women. I arrest it right now. In the name of Jesus. I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway. You are from Benway. You come under this influence. Please help that. Person. Benway. Benway. The spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land. Release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision, and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko, black ropes tied around trees and the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands at the count of three may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded I command it right now upon every shrine every activity of darkness in the name of Jesus let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild, this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, for the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. The supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound. Number three, the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every living thing makes contact with it. Number three, are we together? Number four, water. The mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit contained within it are more mysteries than we understand number five fire a mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing. Purify gold and destroy the impurities. 
I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural. Because everyone is standing on the ground. I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here no matter what you do. There is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first. Even before your family. Your two sisters. They are married. No child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you will believe what I'm telling you. But God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing. No. You may not look like it. But it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now. Over your sisters, over your life and over your family, I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them, even as He did to Hannah at Shiloh. The Lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all those under the anointing, I command the spirits any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims. Therefore, in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you know my voice. I represent his majesty. At the count of three, you must let them go now and forever. One, two, three. Be gone. Go! Out of their lives, destinies, now and forever. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. For when a thief is caught, he's made to pay back tenfold. I command recovery in the name of Jesus. Let them go. There is no hiding, for his light shines upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If there is any project you are involved in, lift your hand. Any project, business project, building project, please just lift your hands. Before I pray, we pray the prayer that will release speed. Projects. Ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time is a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen i want us to shout the name of jesus three times that's what the holy ghost is telling me 
I will lead you and you will shout it. The third time, the chains of delay and stagnation will, will break open. Many of you physically, physically you feel it happening. Thank you, Jesus. Let the word of God come upon this prophecy. Are you ready now? Number one. Are you ready? Number two. Now I want you to get ready. That grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run, overtaking the chariots of Ahaz. Speed and advancement is coming on people right now. Are you ready? Shout Jesus. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement. I command you to advance. I command you to move forward. I break limitations. I break limitations. I command advancement. Outside advancement. The overflows advancement. May that anointing hit you. Advancement. 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 Advancement in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. No power can stop you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than many. Other. Help me. Our God is here. Awesome in power and love. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Stretch your hands towards me. Don't lift it up. Stretch it towards me. There is, there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living. And it's coming upon people and the Lord said let them stretch their hands in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands back to you in the name of Jesus gifts 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 don't man gifts don't man gift where is it I call it forth now don't man gift don't man gift you may not know it's there I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit I'm talking of potentials gifts gifts I stir it up right now like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. So toko toko tope reke teke te. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange, like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row, Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer, and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate him. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. 
it's a strange miracle coming for that person the ninth row supernatural manifestation of the power of god my sister what do you want the lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh i'm looking at you and then i'm seeing your heart and i'm seeing should i say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimun or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this no 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 no. it's not just any grace i pray for you my dear lift your hands god wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside i don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear i end it now i end it now in the name of jesus christ Keep your hands on her stomach i end it now i command that reproach taken from your life in the name of jesus don't come out for social reasons but i'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end, complete end, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete end. I stretch my hands, four people, right now here in this room. Lord, where are they? One is a lady, three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right, help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Opo. Where is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn to come. From... Lift your hands. I'm seeing an attack on your life and your family. And the Lord is with you free. Madam, where is your child? Did you come with your child? There's no time to waste. Please, I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of you witchcraft now and on you right now jesus christ in the jesus christ lift your hand say after me in the name of jesus 
say it in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai one of the things listen hold on I'm seeing now I want you to believe it I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes and the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in I want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise God if you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow tree there are few people attending to them there so let's have people you see why we need more ushers and we need more people say after me father, father. everyone shout it father, father. we receive, we receive. Your, visitation. your visitation in the name of Jesus we receive miracles, we receive miracles. signs and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of god is here to bless you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise those online i want you to connect by faith and trust the power of god to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of god is there to touch you in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why i came here because i saw that this woman your issue is not just healing hold on i saw the, her holding pictures and a passport and then i'm looking at it and i saw a plane is it something like you were staying outside the country is that true yes sir. because i'm seeing a woman a plane bringing you is that true uh -uh. and the lord is opening my eyes i'm seeing another vision i'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir. he drove yes sir. from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar. from where where is he this is you Ah. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam i looked at these things and the lord told me that this woman needs help i know i'm taking time but let's attend madam don't cry it's okay where were you before no other man we are together in our blood we are together are you, were you married yes sir. you are from where benway State, sir you are from benway yes sir you say i told you what god was saying about benway you you married him and went abroad yes sir then what happened he said as you come back my paper is having issue not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community so he lady, married another woman yeah from my same community sir he's staying abroad with her Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, uh, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said to come see, back. Man, listen. This, this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now, I don't mean no disrespect. But you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh? don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now I'm 
praying out in Abuja. From my it's sister. from Abuja you came? Yes, sir. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy, please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a Benin state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman, but she didn't look. If you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now we went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible, the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. You are using the baby to make to get power. You see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together help me you're the god of awesome one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible said, What God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made her dancer look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me? Because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody. She told you he's a man of God. He's a native doctor. Don't go anywhere. Huh? And number two, anybody that says you should bring one naira. What did I say? One naira for prayer. Just thank him and walk away. If, if this poor woman, you still collect money from her for prayer, then you must be a very wicked person, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you walking? 
What do you want God to do in your life? I'm, I'm a pastor, so when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to be, I mean, the things so tough, the the attacks and the uh, foundation, they became so strong. So I took off. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve Him. I've been serving Him to. Where, where Where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say, I am anointed. Be careful. As powerless as Satan is, is your understanding that this depowers him. If you don't have that understanding, you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. My brother, hold my hands. I'm not just seeing you doing ministry. Truly, you need help. Eh? You need help. After service, come and see this man, Pastor Alpha. Eh? After service, come and see him. He will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of prophecy and activations. Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. Your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful. When there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal it creates are we together in the next about two or three minutes i want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open be open in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman you are the first i know you are doing protocol work but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace of two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension in the spirit. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire, fresh dimension, fresh fire, fresh dimension, fresh fire, fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance, power of performance, power of performance, power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Somebody. Grace. Supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension. A dimension you have never seen in your life. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural grace. I open up that level. Grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their. Please, someone, hold her. I don't want. Hold the child. Speaking, we have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that. Ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight, the grace to see, grace to see, the grace to see. Make sure you are holding her well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire, fresh fire, in the name of Jesus Christ fresh fire i'm not it's not like i'm just speaking people this is this is just by the spirit come the lord is bringing glory on you fresh fire even upon your
your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take it. Drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus. Judgment upon that devil. Foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jamfa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing it. A new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace. And a new one is supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up. I open up. I open up. Closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence 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 business influence new grace new dimensions of wealth influence commanding miracles strange miracles collect that child from hope collect that child from hope in the name of jesus fresh fire hope i activate that dimension fresh fire in the name of jesus god is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of jesus where's aaron aaron where's aaron in the name of jesus christ the lord says i should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of jesus christ Something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three. If you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry, a new level of power. A new level of grace never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren where's Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 by the unction of the Spirit speed by the unction
action of the spirit speak in the name of Jesus hallelujah every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now where's pastor house first wife just hold her there she's heavy so in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying have I not said I will bring you favor it will manifest God is bringing favor after you give birth to your child pastor your family will step into a strange level of favor it will be at the commencement of this boy's birth or this child the moment the child is born in the name of Jesus Christ there will be strange miracles by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I pray for you the kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life I declare receive it now receive it right now all your tithes your giving God has released the blessings but something has hijacked it in the realm of the spirit I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest whatever was not working in your life before you came here I decree by the spirit of the living God go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately I say it again whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you to make sure that you die or any bad news from your family I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ as you step into the month of May by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever had this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son I declare in one month this month of May a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month I pray for those who are students you wrote your exams you cannot rest you are afraid whatever went wrong I change it now whatever went wrong I change it now I don't care what went wrong I change it now anyone here trusting God for a job by May miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives may God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job and you are here you are walking and they've refused to promote you whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office in the name of Jesus Christ any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life I pray now I command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them the same way the stars fought for Deborah I command the earth to fight them 
I command their success to fight them. Anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you, I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you. Any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness, carnality, whatever it is, sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life, your passion, you were on fire for God, but there's laziness, carelessness, lukewarmness in the name of Jesus, like the hair of Samson. I command a sevenfold restoration for you now. Prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has destroyed your word life, no passion. You carry your Bible, you don't even know what to study. You make up your mind that you will study. There is a grace that helps men. I pray in the name of Jesus. May that enabling grace come upon your life now. May that enabling grace come upon your life now. The final prayer I want to pray for you. Listen. There is a name that God is called. The lifter of men. Hear me. Don't let any man lie to you that he can lift you on his own. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. Do you know lifting is a sign that God is with you? Yes? Read your Bible. Lifting. To leave your current position to another is not a sign of pigmanism. It truly is a sign that God is with you. Read your Bible. There is nobody that God was with who he did not lift. God who can pick a man from a donkey. Many of us, it's not like you are doing bad, but where you are, you have been there for a long time everybody is rising and they come and see you spiritually financially please don't let anybody indoctrinate you that lifting is not of god if you are not lifted you will be frustrated at a point because the only way to bless others is as you are rising therefore i speak to your life the god who has gloriously lifted this ministry the god who by his spirit has helped us giving us a voice connected us to over 44 nations of the earth supernaturally by his spirit i pray in the name of jesus wherever on the surface of the earth your lifting is tied to i decree and declare be lifted now in the name of jesus be lifted now in the name of jesus I speak to your business whatever you do be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your ministry be lifted now in the name of Jesus they are taking for a prey and none say it restore I say restore I prophesy restore in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise hello 